Today we are going to talk about Roya, Roya Behasti, uh, Dr. Roya Behasti. She was born in 1977 in Tehran, Iran. Uh, she attended uh, Far John Gate High School, uh, one of the most selective, gifted and talented high schools in Tehran. And she met with Maria Mirjokhani at the school. Uh, they eventually become friend, lifelong friend. They work together to participate in the Iranian uh, Math Olympiad, International Math Olympiad. Uh, they even um, work together as a researcher to uh, to write a book. Uh, and they uh, they came together to the United States, uh, and uh, and um, and they got their PhD, one from Harvard and one from MIT. Both are across the street. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about. Roya, Roya Behasti. So, r r r when we talk about Roya Behasti and Mirza Khani, one thing kind of uh, come to my mind, and that is um, Sir Humphrey Davy. Sir Humphrey Davy's relationship with uh, with Michael Faraday. Sir Humphrey's biggest discovery was not in chemistry, but Michael Faraday. Uh, Roya Basant is biggest discovery not in the mathematics, but Maryam Mirjokhani. So, Roya got inspiration from Maryam many times. First at the high school, at Fajan Gan High School and then at the university they attended, the Sharif uh, Technical University, one of the most selective university in Tehran. They call it MIT in Tehran. Um, so, seventh grade, they were in seventh grade. Uh, Maryam was like, like she was she was top of every class. I mean, she was doing well in everything except math. So one day, Mariam received her math score. She got 16 out of 20, and and she was uh, she was so sad. Uh, she was so angry. She was so mad that she ripped off the the exam. And then when she came back next year, and um, in the ninth, uh, in the eighth grade. Uh, Roya discovered a new Mariam. Great en enthusiasm for math, great excitement for math, um, tremendously good in math. So she had no idea what happened with Mariam in the summer. Somehow miracle happened to Mariam in the summer and she uh, became very good in math, uh, very enthusiastic for math and very excited for math. All right. So and that this kind of uh, really inspired Roya. So Roya eventually fell in love with math as well. And they participated in the National Math Olympiad and they participated in International Math Olympiad. Another story and that, that really, um, uh, really inspired Roya in a great level. So they were uh, pursuing uh, a bachelor degree in mathematics at Sharif University. So uh, one of the math professor gave them a take home test. Uh, so, uh, Mariam uh, went to Roya's uh, house to uh, finish, the, finish the exam. Uh, so, they both together, uh, they, they solved a couple of the problem uh, from they started like at that time, this time until uh, like 3 in the 3 a.m., 3 in the morning. At the time, the Roy and Mariam realized that the last two problem would be very difficult. They check uh, every 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 possible uh, places, only to find out there are some references, uh, some uh, loose references uh, in the textbook about those problem, but there is no direct example of those problems. So Roy decided to take a nap, and she. Um, she went to bed and she uh, she fall in sleep. On the other hand, Mariam she was very persistent. She did not want to go go sleep. She did not want to pause. She wanted to see the bottom of it. So she went on and on and on. When Roya woke up in the morning, um, like eight in the morning, only to find out that Mariam solved both problem. Both problem. That's really uh, the biggest inspiration for Roya. Uh, and from that day, she never 
give up. I wrote a book, they published a book on number theory. So Roya, when Roya came to uh, MIT, she uh, she worked on uh, something called Phenos uh, geometry, Phenos space, and uh, that is really uh, something very important. So for example, uh, if you have a two point, and if you make a line uh, between two points, you definitely can make a line. However, if you want to make a line between two points with least curvature, and that would be, uh, we're going to call it geodesic, right? Okay, so once you have a geodesic, least curvature means zero curvature. So when you have a geodesic, uh, you can imagine a, a straight line which is perpendicular to the geodesic. Do two, do two perpendicular line with respect to the geodesic that you have. What do you have? Two line sitting on the geodesic. That two line will neither diverse nor converse, right? What are you going to call that? Euclidean geometry because it satisfy Euclid all the postulate, uh, including the postulate number five, right? Okay. So now, now listen to uh, listen to this very carefully. Um, what if this two line diverse or this two line converse? Would always this two line be parallel? This type of question uh, would be posed by Gauss and and Riemann, and they 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 would be thinking about geometry that is outside Euclidean geometry. For example, what if this two line this two line diverse at what scenario if the sum of all the angle is 120 then that would not be diverse not converse they will be parallel they will not touch each other forever but what if what if what if their sum is less than 180 then they will diverse right they will diverse they will diverse they will not meet not only they will not meet with each other but they will diverse right this is called uh, this is called the the hyperbolic geometry, and then uh, the other type of geometry is the spherical geometry. That's the royal working on Phenos geometry, which is in a special case of the spherical geometry, and that talks about the converse. So if you have the if the angle of the triangle is more than 180, and then there of course the converse, right? The sum of the uh, sum of the sum of the angle of the three uh, so of the triangle would be more than 180 so they converse so Roya would ask you to imagine the earth 